Hello, I'm Doug Rieger Johnson. I'm an assistant professor of genetics and medicine at Mayo Clinic, Florida. Today I'll be talking on familial adenomatous polyposis, or FAP stomach polyps. Patients with FAP can have two types of stomach polyps, fundogland polyps, or FGPs, and adenomas. To review the anatomy of the stomach, the esophagus enters the stomach and the small intestine leaves the stomach. The first section of the small intestine after the stomach is called the duodenum. The stomach has three sections. At the top of the stomach is the fundus, in the middle of the stomach is the body, and at the end of the stomach is the antrum. The different sections of the stomach are associated with different types of polyps. The fundic gland polyps occur in the fundus and body of the stomach. The adenomas occur in the antrum of the stomach. The different sections of the stomach are associated with different types of stomach polyps. The fundus and the body of the stomach are where fundic gland polyps are seen. The antrum of the stomach is where adenomas are seen. This is a photograph taken from inside the stomach of a patient with FAP. We're looking at the body of the stomach. You can see that the body is covered with small, pearly, gumdrop appearing polyps. This appearance is classic for FAP fundic gland polyps. This is another picture from inside the stomach of a patient with FAP. We're looking at the antrum. Top center, you can see the entrance into the small intestine from the stomach. The arrows point out small, subtle bumps, which are in fact gastric adenomas. This is the third and final picture uh, taken from inside the stomach of a patient with FAP. It's a picture of the antrum. In top center, you can see the opening into the duodenum. This picture looks different than the other pictures because a special filter called narrowband imaging has been activated on the endoscope. The arrows show uh, adenomas. The narrowband imaging allows the adenomas to be more easily seen, highlighting their abnormal pattern. Gastric cancer is rare in FAP patients. FAP stomach polyps, either the fundic gland polyps or the adenomas, do not often change into cancer. Below is a statement summarizing that opinion from the 2008 International Guidelines for the Management of Familial Polyposis. Fundic gland polyps often do have precancerous changes but rarely become cancer. In a study of 78 FAP patients, 84% had fundic gland polyps, and 41% had fundic gland polyps with dysplasia or precancerous changes. This is important because patients with FAP will often have a fundic gland polyp removed, and it will be reported by the pathologist that the fundic gland polyp had precancerous changes. The patient and the physician are then very concerned that the fundic gland polyp or other fundic gland polyps will become cancerous. As we've seen, fundic gland polyps rarely, rarely become cancerous in FAP. Gastric cancer in FAP, although rare, is much more likely to originate from adenomas in the antrum than fundic gland polyps in the body and fundus. A review of 40 years of the literature from 1968 to 2008 only found 37 cases of gastric cancer in FAP patients. This review was restricted to the English literature. This slide shows our recommendations at Mayo Clinic Florida for FAP stomach polyps. We recommend that the endoscopy reports for FAP patients 
note whether they have polyps or not. If the polyps are present, we recommend the location, number, and size be noted. For the fundic gland polyps, we describe those and only biopsy them or remove them if they are suspicious. For the adenomas, we recommend those be removed. This is the end of the presentation. I hope it's been helpful to you. Please let me know if you'd like a copy of the presentation. Thank you.